Welcome to Verona. All right, fellow travelers, welcome back to the adventures of a traveling Don. My name is Benjamin O, and as you can see, I'm in the beautiful city of Verona, the crossroads and jewel of the north of Italy between Milan and Venice. It's a beautiful city. It's my personal favorite city in Italy, and we're going to go ahead and tour around, uh, see the sights, definitely get a bunch of food. There is a specific cuisine, Veronese cuisine, um, that they do here, so we'll get into that particularly around dinner time. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the tour of Verona. <music> So to start your Verona food and walking tour trip off, you always gotta get yourself a cup of coffee just to get you going, get a little caffeine in you. And then you come to uh, Nizza Cafe, and that's the place to come to. It's on the northeast side of Old Town, just right next to the River Adige. And uh, I got myself a cup of a uh, Americano coffee, as well as a couple of little, little niblets as well. So we're gonna try the coffee first. Good coffee. Very, very good coffee. Given I'm not the expert on coffee, I usually don't drink I'm more of a tea kind of guy, um, but coffee has helped me a lot on this trip so far. It's a little bit higher caffeine intake uh, with all the goings, so. But, the, but my two things I got here are, I got a sweet, uh, which is a nice kind of like pastry with um, icing, and there's uh, some fruit in there. I think it's like raisin fruit in there. Oh. Mm. Yummy, very good. And I got this little bad boy right here. Almost looks like a um, like a crispy crispy dumpling. In all honesty, but he told me it's uh, sausage and uh, some herbs in there. So let's take a bite real quick. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm not sure. It looks like spinach or some kind of basil in there. That's actually nice. Nice little start off there. Needs a cafe. Get your start off here. So the city of Verona is an ancient city that runs all the way back to the Roman Republic, well before the birth of Christ. And it is a city that is surrounded on three sides by the river Adige that runs through it. And behind me here is the Ponte Pietro, and that is one of the oldest bridges here in Verona. And Verona is very much known for its bridges because, because it is surrounded on three sides by water, it's gotten about, I think, tenfold different bridges that go across the Adige within the Verona district. And within the downtown district, the old town, there's about seven of them. Uh, there's two that are old walking ones, one on the uh, west side, and then this one here on kind of like the northeast side, Ponte Pietro, this is the oldest one. This dates back to the Roman times. Uh, it was blown up during World War II, but it has been uh, reestablished. But yeah, this uh, bridge dates back to uh, well over 2,000 years, which is actually really kind of cool. So. But we got the coffee in us, got you a little bit of history to start you off. Now we're gonna head up, we're gonna go see the Roman Theater, uh, check out the museum up there, give you one of the best views of Verona from Castle San Pietro, and then we'll go get some lunch. Okay, so I'm here at the Roman Amphitheater. Uh, this is a first century BC uh, amphitheater. It's not as big as the one in Lyon in the last episode, but it is definitely about a century, century and a half older. Uh, it's still very well put together for what it is. Uh, Roman architecture was probably the best this world has ever seen that and the Egyptians in all honesty but it's really cool it's also it's got a museum that we'll head up to inside upstairs and then uh, you can also take those stairs eventually leads to Castel San Pietro which used to have an old Roman temple they're not sure for which god but that has of course been since uh, been taken uh, over by the Castel however it is well worth it. It's only about four, uh, four euro and 50 cents to get in, and that includes the museum as well. So I hope you guys enjoy the tour, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, learn a little Roman history, shall we? Mm. 
someone's missing a foot. How embarrassing. <laughs> action figures. Who knew? So the cool thing about this museum is not just the fact that it has all the Roman artifacts from around Verona, they've also collected from around the world, not just Roman artifacts, but antiquity, you have some Greek uh, pottery in there, they have stuff from the Etruscans, there's a nice black vase from the Etruscans, which is, uh, you know, predates the Romans. Um, it's just a beautiful, fantastic museum with a lot of different just Roman sculptures. And then it also has a little bit of... Uh, kind of like Renaissance, late Middle Ages stuff in there as well. There's a Jesuit church that basically took over this uh, this area for a little while. So you have a lot of that history. Um, there's a little bit of Da Vinci's in there as well. Um, it's hard to find, but it is in there. But it's, it's really cool. And then you come off to this promenade and you get this grand sweeping view of Verona. Now this is not the number one view. Uh, we've got to go a little bit further up to the Castello, but not too bad of a view from this particular point. And like I said, it's all $4.50 a euro. And it's, you know, well worth the price. So I am here up near Castel San Pietro, which is right behind me over here. Um, this is actually a government building, so it's not something you can technically tour. It's not like a big artist thing. However, when you come up to Castel San Pietro, it is the sweeping view is what you're after. It is just gorgeous. It gives you the best view. And I mean, we came up here on a great day. It's super sunny and rather warm. It was supposed to be like 41, 42. I think it technically still is, but with the sun, it feels like 50. But you get this beautiful view of all of Verona, downtown, even further, and then going north up towards the uh, the mountains, Lake Garda is in the background over there. You have Bolzano's way back that way, about a two hour train ride north, uh, heading towards Germany. And that's what I love about Verona is, because it's the heart of Northern Italy, you can get to Venice, Milan, Turin, Bologna, Florence, uh, Bolzano, and even going up into Innsbruck and Austria, within about max two to three hours of a train ride. It's, it's a great, great spot to kind of centralize yourself if you are doing a tour of Northern Italy. So, but yeah, this is the view from Castel San Pietro. So, absolutely fantastic. Now let's go get some lunch. Lasciati ogno speranza o voi che entrata. Abandon all hope ye who enter here into Santa Felicita. This is a old abandoned church that has been turned into a pizzeria restaurant and this is where we will be having lunch. I'm actually kind of super excited. You kind of look around and there is all of this fantastic art. It's, um, I would say it's high late medieval to renaissance kind of style. Um, I think the church goes back to about the 15th of uh, 16th century. But it's kind of cool what they've done with it inside. Um, and you know, uh, it's, it's highly rated particularly for its pizza, so I'm super excited for the pizza. Okay, so I got my pizza. I got the, uh, the bufalata, uh, which is just a traditional margarita, but with the buffalo cheese instead of the traditional cheese. And it looks absolutely fantastic. Now, one of the things you have to remember when you get pizza in Italy, it comes just kind of like one whole pie. 
they don't cut it for you because when you're in Italy, you generally cut it yourself. You, know, you, know, you eat with a fork and knife. You don't eat with uh, <laughs> just your hands. Although there are some like uh, takeaway small places where you can get slices, which do allow for that. However, this is the true Italian way. Look at all that cheese. Oh, so gooey. All right. Mm. Mm. Okay. That's fantastic. The cheese is amazing, very rich. Um, the, the, the crust is like super light, uh, kind of crunchy in all honesty. And then just have a nice little little bit of sauce. It's, when you have Italian pizza, particularly in Italy, there's not a lot of toppings and it's not like super big. It's just kind of like, you know, it's, 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 it's very light, very thin crust but it is very fantastic. Oh, this is really cool. And this setting is awesome. I mean, Santa Felicita, excuse me. That was a tongue twister there. But Santa Felicita is amazing. Highly recommend checking this place out if you're ever in Verona. So one thing that I did get wrong while I was at uh, Santa Felicita was the fact that it's actually an 11th century church. The church dates back to 1050 AD, not the 15th or 16th century, which I thought by the artwork. But he pointed up to the rafters uh, where it was a much older style of artwork that dates back to that time. So yeah, the church that that restaurant is in goes back almost a thousand years. Holy crap. Anyway, let's, uh, let's go get some gelato, shall we? It's the best way to finish off a pizza. So I got my gelato. So uh, I got it from this place called Vittoria 1938 uh, Gelateria. Uh, it's just kind of like off the main road and not too far from the bridge over that way. Uh, this is on the west side of town. But uh, go ahead and uh, give us a try. This is the Crema Vittoria. So this is the house crema uh, gelato. Mmm. Mmm. So definitely vanilla, um, almost tastes a little bit like it's got a little bit of honey in there as well. But that's actually, ooh. Mm. Come on. Okay, kiddos, uh, so lesson of the day from everyone's favorite Uncle Ben. Uh, yeah, uh, make sure double and triple check that all the batteries that you have for your cameras are and have been fully uh, recharged. Unfortunately, right as I was finishing the ice cream and my gelato, my camera died and realized, oh, battery. Then let's check my, uh, my, my extra battery. Oh no, you forgot to charge that too, you dummy. All right, so anyway, yeah, that's, uh, that's what happened. So we are recharged. It is now nighttime, so we're gonna go hit up Verona at night. Enjoy. Okay, so behind me here is Piazza del Erbe, uh, Ebre, and it is probably the main square outside of the uh, Arena Square uh, that's a little bit further south of here, at the entrance of town. But here, this is kind of like the heart of Old Town Verona. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. I love coming here whenever I'm in Verona. Just come to the square, relax, enjoy yourself, and definitely get a glass of wine, maybe a snack or something like that. But it's cool. It's all lit up for Christmas right now. They've got the Christmas markets going on and I'm super excited. Now, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of food at this particular market. This is more clothes, accessories, a lot of masks that uh, can be used definitely for um, Carnaval that comes up in February. But this is, uh, this is nice. I like what they've done with it. It's usually, it is usually packed, but it's not like this. It doesn't have all the stalls like this. It's usually cafes and restaurants. But yeah, whenever you're in Verona, come up to uh, uh, Piazza del Ebre, and this is kind of like the heart of the center of um, Verona. 
So, all right, let's see if I can find something to eat. So Piazza Erbe, not Ebra, Erbe. Jesus, what is wrong with my Italian? Fancy meeting you under this tree. Share a glass of wine with me. So I'm literally eating amongst the trees. Got my own little Christmas tree right up next to my table. Uh, but anyway, when you're in Italy, one of the things that you have to remember to um, do is a thing called aperitivo. Aperitivo is the like the Italian version of Spanish tapas, where you go into a place that does aperitivo, you order your drink. Like for me, I got my gla myself a glass of Amarone red wine. So I got myself some red wine, and then they, uh, you know, bring out a selection of food for you. Um, some places it does charge a little bit of, uh, you know, like a surcharge or something like that, but it's usually not that expensive, and it's a great way to get a drink, get a little bit of food uh, before your meal. So I've got like three different things that they brought me. I only asked for two, they gave me three. Uh, so this one looks like it's got potato, or uh, excuse me, parmigiana on top with some kind of bread cabbage, so we're gonna try that. Mm. Mm. That's very good. I'm not sure what, what the sauce is, but that Parmesan makes it all fantastic. And then you have one with the egg and some kind of crema with vegetables in there. It looks like almost like a potato salad with a like, um, hard boiled egg on top. Go and try this. Mm. Okay. Okay, that's good. That's very good. No, that's um. I said that almost tastes like potato salad. With a little hard boiled egg on top. Almost very southern in a way. Kind of nice. And then your last bit is of course the one with the meat, and it looks like cheese, a cheese spread on the bottom. So. Uh, uh, Oh, come on now. Freshly shaved parma ham. Come on, that's fantastic. So, well done, guys. Well done. All right, so that was Osteria del Bugiardo. That was fantastic for a starter. A nice glass of wine, about $14.50 for the whole thing, and most of that was uh, the glass of Amarone that I had. Uh, so, again, aperitivo here in Italy. Check it out. Some places you get the food for free. Some places you have to pay, but usually it's very cheap. Very similar to like a, a lot of Spanish tapas places. And just like that, there's a lot of places you can sit down, but they're uh, mostly standing room. I mean, you saw me, I was standing basically un and eating underneath a Christmas tree, but you know what? It's kind of a fun experience. I'm sure people have shared a glass of wine, had a little bite under some mistletoe or some holly. You know what? Who's ever done it under a full frickin' tree? But me, that's right. And that is the extent of my rhyming and rapping skills. So with that out of the way, let's, uh, Let's head to the Arena Christmas Market and see what we can see. Okay, so behind me here is the arena. This is an old Roman arena where, of course, they used to have the gladiator fights, uh, among other many things. Net is still working today. It's still pretty much held together very, very well, and it does have... Um, plenty of concerts and operas that do operate within the wall so it's actually kind of cool as one of the, one of my dreams is one day to come here and actually listen to like a, uh, a performance or an opera or something like that here at the arena because it would probably be a very very cool experience but the Christmas market is here in front of the square in front of it including this big old uh, you see wishing star that comes crashing down from the arena uh, here which is kind of cool it's a very very unique thing that I haven't seen so far and it's actually a rather big market like the market extends throughout the entirety of here of the whole plaza and then down a couple of the different side streets um, as well so i'd say it's a bit bigger than lyon definitely not as big as colmar strasbourg as a whole um, but it's rather nice so far that i've seen again a little different uh it has a lot of stalls that have obviously some italian foods but 
it's more shopping and it's more real kind of like actual market market instead of just purely Christmas. So you can find a lot of other things that aren't Christmas related. Whereas in, in France, a lot of the stalls, it was pure kind of like that Christmas feeling. So, but even still, it's still got that spirit and it's still really cool. All right, so let's explore this and then we'll head off to the place that we're gonna go for for dinner tonight. Okay, so you're in Italy, you're at the markets, you gotta have the cannolis. I mean, come on, man. Nothing better than a cannoli when you're in Italy. <laughs> Those are real good. Yum, 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 yum. Okay, I got the chocolate in. There's pistachio, there's regular, but mm, nothing better than a cannoli. So if you're looking to do some shopping uh, while you're in Verona and you want kind of like the, you know, nice boutique stores and big name brands and stuff like that, Via Giuseppe Manzini would be the place to come. It's got the street that's got kind of like this beautiful like marbled stonework uh, for the walking area. Um, so it's just really, really nice. It's a beautiful street. I usually can't afford most of the stuff that's on this street, or at least one item, that's about it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you're if you're into if you're into some shopping and whatnot, this is definitely the fashion district of Verona. It's really lit up, really really nice place. Okay, so we've had our coffee, we've had our lunch, we had the pizza for lunch, we had our gelato, we had our cannoli at the market, we had our aperitivo. What do you finish it off with here in Verona? You finish it off at Asterio, Asteria, uh, Sotoriva. Sorry, it's a bit of a <laughs> it's a bit of a wordplay there. But this is my favorite restaurant that I've been to so far in Verona, and I've been here three. This is my third time here. I love this place. It's a little back alley, like side street place. Uh, Osteria is, of course, a, an Italian local restaurant um, that they Osteria is used to just be wine bars, and then they basically created menus that are small. So you have like the daily menu, there's like four or five things on it um, that you can choose from. This is a nice family owned and run Osteria uh, in, this, in the kind of like the north side, north east side of the main part of the old district in Verona. Now I got myself some of the house Casa Red, red Wine. Um, you can get like half a liter for it's like five euros, you know, so you get like two, really two, two and a half glasses for five euros because it is their house wine. And then for dinner, I got myself the pasta sada de caval. Now, the pasta sada de caval is a very, very much a traditional Veronese dish. It is stewed horse meat. And I know some of y'all, because I know a couple of my old friends are uh, horse, horse owners, but this is stewed horse meat. This is a traditional dish here in Verona with uh, cheesy polenta. So it's stewed. They're very, very tender, so we're gonna go ahead and give it a try real quick. So, a very simple dish. Mmm. It's so good. It's just stewed with Amarone red wine and some spices. Absolutely fantastic. Very, very simple. And like I said, it's kind of up to you whether or not you're um, interested in. Um, eating horse, but it is very much a traditional thing up here. Verona is known for its cavalry. Verona is known for um, horses in this area. So this is a classic style Veronese dish and it is absolutely delicious. I'm gonna get another bite of that. It's like that chunky, chunky meat. Ooh, steamy. Mmm, so good. Whew. okay, I am full. I am warm from my wine. I am going to hit this bed face first and probably about an hour after I upload everything I need to on my computer. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed everything about Verona today. All the food, the great sights around, the Christmas market. That was actually a really nice surprise for me. Oh my God, that cannoli was amazing. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed everything. The city is fantastic. It's, like I said, my personal favorite city. It is a gem of Northern Italy. And of course it was, it, it shows itself in the fact that William Shakespeare did his own, you know, 
portrayed Romeo and Juliet here. You know, he got inspiration from this from this place. And uh, it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful city. It's got a lot of art, a lot of history, and of course a lot of romance to it. So you know, if you're if you're romantically involved, come to Verona, be like Romeo and Juliet. Even a Montague and a Capuet can fall in love and then commit ritual double suicide to prove their love. You know what? Hold off on that last part. Just. Just come for the food. Just, just, just come for the food. Don't forget the romantic stuff. Don't go there, down that route. Don't go down that route. Anyway, guys. Hope you guys have a wonderful evening. And on that dark, dark note, I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Peace out, guys.